Hello, this is the Chart Profit video. Approaching two hours into the trading day, Friday 28th of July. This one, the pre open today, we're looking at the E mini SP. So, back on the 19th of July, that the very minor point of control I had migrated to 24.56.50, which is this line here. We said pre open Thursday that the first sign of minor day frame weakness would be a value area printed below that minor point of control. And shortly after that, we saw a new high in the E mini and then pretty swift uh, sell off. We had a lower value area here, aggressive uh, selling was marked here. That's the red at the bottom mark there. But we did find low exactly at that level and rebounded back up above 2470 off that support. I made the, the point today that uh, in the longer time frame, this price action, this sell off here although this part being aggressive in the day frame is actually can be considered reactive selling because the value area was printed above this first level support. So we've just been pretty quickly auctioned back to that first level support. Therefore, in the longer time frame, this is just reactive selling. So what we'd be more concerned about uh, would be that first sign of weakness marked below that level, which would be a value area printed below that minor point of control. We look at the current half hour chart. Uh, here's that spike lower, here's the level we've been talking about just then, currently printing around 24.64. That aggressive selling being marked red on the spider up here at the top, taken off the e-mini profile. The breadth section in the middle here remains green, and price oscillator at the bottom, although it's just tipped a little lower, uh, remains above zero, so the trend up momentum possibly slowing here. Here's the breadth chart, daily breadth chart through Thursday for New York. These bottom two indicators staying above their important levels. That's the net new highs, 25. Five day moving average in black there above zero. And the percentage of stocks in my New York list above their 50 day moving average, that number stays above 60 uh, at the currently. And as long as it's above 50, both of these get a tick. And therefore, this part of the pulse chart, the breadth here remains green. Quick look at the important charts. This is a spider holding above 243.40. It's two months, so it's still in a strong price location. We'll refer back to the e mini profiles for the more shorter term trend, as just discussed. But in the longer term, as long as the spider holds above 243.40, uh, it's in a strong position. We discuss the relative strength of the US indices relative to European. This is the German DAX. You can see here. Currently today, it's at its lowest since back over here in mid-April. So uh, relatively a weak chart, this European-German index. And again here, the FTSE 100, the UK FTSE 100 index, uh, actually has today probed down into that support, which is the important 12-month point of control at 73.46. Let's say a bar printed below that level would be a weak position for the FTSE. Quick look at the sentiment indicators, my version of the Rydex assets ratio that we follow each day in the pre-open. Having peaked over here recently, late June, uh, above 15, for the first time ever. Said that that's a long-term warning that the Rydex traders were getting so enthusiastic here. Uh, actually, the ratio came off pretty quickly as the market went higher in the short term. That's a good sign. Currently, we're printing down here just above 9. If we break that down and just show the bear fund assets in isolation, you can see the lowest reading um, for the bear fund assets that I follow over here at that same point um, when the ratio peaked. Almost a complete lack of bears historically at that point. Currently are the bulls. We're looking at the bull fund assets here, again in isolation. Uh, pretty slow to pick up recently. What we certainly don't want to see is the market selling off and the bull assets uh, increasing which would indicate the retail traders at this point buying the dip which would be a little concerning considering that peak reading recently it's worth pointing out the bears percent reading in the recent poll from AAII that came out this week bears percent was lower at 24.3 percent that's an eight month low bears percent in the investors intelligence poll newsletter writers this week, bears percent was lower at 16.5%. That's the lowest since July 2015. 
Remembering, of course, all these indicators that we are discussing are interpreted in a contrarian fashion. So lack of bears that we're seeing here in these two poles is actually not a bullish indication. The US fund flows reported equity fund, including ETF outflows this week, a net outflow of 1.4 billion in the week to the 26th of July. The four week flow, the black line at the bottom here, remains below zero, a net outflow over four weeks. Pretty neutral, I think. Looking here at the current chart of TLT, the T bond ETF, had a pretty poor week this week, but holding above. It's first level major support here, the eight month at 121.63. If I just draw in the halfway point of the recent low or earlier in the year, we can see the half range support coming off uh, that low. Any chart that's trying to establish an uptrend off a major low will often retrace back to that halfway point, which would usually provide support if this is going to be an uptrend which will continue. So uh, that's reasonably important. It's just above that uh, 121.63 level and price below there would indicate a retest of the major at 119. Currently we're holding that despite this down week this week. Last week we discussed at length what I described as a setup in the commitments of traders data for gold specifically the fact that the uh, commercials or the smart money had broken out here, the net position had broken out to a new high showing they were extremely bullish. The trend followers are what we call the large speculators in this legacy data here breaking down to a new low. Uh, that's the setup. It's uh, usually pretty bullish and I said probably be confirmed by a move above 119.84 which is the major point of control for GLD. You can see where we are right now. Uh, here is 119.84, the major, and we are just uh, breaking out a little here above that level. GLD can hold this major point of control, hold above that level. That would indicate strength going forward. Strength in gold, not dependent on, but usually coincides with weakness for the dollar. Uh, this is the US dollar index. Again, we talked about this at length last week. Um, previously indicated when this two year was broken over here. Um, previously we've seen the support here and then that two year controlling price was broken and then we saw a pretty quick decline and I talked about target of 93.55 in here which has been hit actually went a little lower yesterday that target based on price distributions on the way down um, I just extrapolated a target at that level we've actually hit that uh, you'd usually see at the edge of these distributions a pretty sharp reaction or trend reversal. Uh, can't say that we've seen that at all yet. So the longer price spends being accepted down around 93.50, the more we have to look at the fact it's in a really weak price location below that level rather than possibility of a trend turn here. Seasonal pattern for the dollar index I think is usually Weakness through to the end of July, you see a bit of strength in August and then further weakness in September. The index would need to retrace and print back above that level at 95.57, which is now two year resistance. We have to say that in the longer term, this is really, really weak price distribution. Let's look at the pound dollar here. Um, the major level is the 15 month locally here at 124.78. Actually, just recently, the five month has come into play here, 129.36. Looks like we've had that higher low pattern on that uh, support. Previously, I've shown a chart of the long term distribution for the pound with the major value area high coming in around this level, um, which certainly was resistance here and here, but we seem to be accepting price up around this value area high which usually indicates that a new distribution has begun. If we see acceptance like that, the behavior indicating a new price distribution, which in this case would obviously be higher. So that's not a bearish indication. It's a sign of strength, which is possibly a surprise to a lot of people for the pound, as we've seen on the previous chart, probably largely due to the weakness in the dollar. I'll finish with the Euro FX charts discussed in the pre-open today. We saw the seven month point of control back in April here providing support um, then we rallied pretty quickly and in a minor time frame here we formed a higher low on the major here at 113.29 and from that kind of pivot we've 
uh, extended the rally in the euro. Okay, that concludes. Once again, I wish you a good weekend and thank you for watching.